Okay, at 7.45, we're going to bring the meeting to order. We have one item on the agenda, uh, whether or not uh, ZBA is going to appeal the decision of the DHCD. Uh, as of right now, we're going to have a brief comment from town council. Good evening, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Good evening, residents of Arlington and other concerned parties. My name is Doug Pine. I'm the Town Council of Arlington. I'm here on behalf of the Town officials, our Special Counsel uh, Attorney John Witten, uh, as well as myself, to uh, briefly summarize the decision before the Board tonight. As the Board knows, we received notice that DHCD essentially rejected our assertion of so-called safe harbor status on the basis that 1.5 percent of uh, appropriate developable land in Arlington was reser is reserved for deed-restricted affordable housing. Uh, you all have seen the decision. I won't go over all of the uh, details of it unless you have specific questions. Mm -hmm. But the uh, town maintains that our data, our methodology, and our legal reasoning are sound. And therefore, we believe that um, we can continue and should continue to prosecute uh, this matter to the next level, which is the Housing Appeals Committee, for the purpose of not only um, assertion of our rights as we see them now, but also preserving our rights uh, for uh, future appeals if it becomes necessary. With that, if you have any questions, again, I'm happy to answer them, but I think the uh, memo from, uh, the, the decision from DHCD speaks for itself, as well as our previous memo, which provided, was provided to you on September 27th when you initially made your decision to assert safe harbor status. Uh, Council Haverty is here to provide any technical assistance. Uh, should the board make a decision and want to make a motion, um, I have a good idea of what that motion should be, but I'll obviously rely on the uh, technical expertise of Mr. Haverty to correct me if I'm wrong about anything. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? So what would be the effect if there is a vote to go ahead and appeal the decision? So how will that work in terms of the effect for the timeline? So, Mr. Havity, correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm missing anything here, but um, essentially the substantive uh, examination of the application by Thorn, uh, regarding the Thorndike development would continue to be stayed. Uh, there would be a substantive, uh, much more comprehensive examination of the 1.5% calculation assertion uh, that would uh, result in an evidentiary hearing that would provide uh, both ourselves and the applicants the opportunity to present uh, greater depth of evidence, including testimony. Uh, so uh, it's hard for me to say exactly how long it would take DHCD to schedule a hearing and produce a decision, but one could assume that it would be at least three months, maybe more than that, uh, maybe as many as six. I don't know if Mr. Haverty has any insight on that, but I think that it's at least that time frame in which the substantive uh, hearing of the application would be stayed. Mr. Chairman, I actually spoke with someone from the state today, and right now it's approximately an eight-month eight process on these appeals. Um, HAC is not moving very quickly on them as a general rule, although each case is, is a different animal. So there's really no telling how long it would take. But I, I wouldn't expect it to be quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what sorts of information would be available in the appeal that hadn't been presented? at the time that this initial decision was given? So the initial decision is based upon the subsidized housing inventory uh, and then our GIS data about, um, town, uh, about land that's supposed to be excluded. Uh, we would have the opportunity to provide testimony to question um, the applicants with respect to how they went about their calculation, what data they relied upon, um, and similarly, I think there would be an opportunity for us to um, have our folks testify on behalf of why the town believes that it has the um, inventory, and why it believes its uh, methodology is correct, things of that nature. Mr. Habit, do you, do, would you add anything to that? Uh, I would point out that in the process that's already occurred, um, the town and the board didn't really have any opportunity to respond to the information that was submitted by the applicant. So the town had the initial burden um, to come up with evidence to support its claim when it asserted its claim. And then the way the process works is then the applicant actually has the opportunity to appeal 
to DHCD, and they provide DHCD their reasons for claiming that the town hasn't met it. So you've never had an opportunity to, to have actually reviewed that information and provide a substantive response. Okay. So that's something new that will occur as part of this process. Plus, it's a de novo hearing, so any additional information that the town believes supports its position can be submitted during that process. Okay. Do we have any other questions? This time I'd like to make a motion to authorize our special counsel, Mr. Whitten, to file an appeal of DHCD's determination with respect to the 1.5% calculation on behalf of the ZBA in the town of Arlington. A second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed unanimously. Uh, business tonight. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, one point I'd like to make uh, procedurally moving forward um, so that you don't need to re notice this hearing um, once the appeal is completed is just every month or whenever you continue it to, you just need to continue it again to a date certain until the point where the appeal period is the process has completed okay. and then you can start from there. Okay. So, are you, are you recommending that we do that now? Well, it's already, it's already been continued to a date, sir. So, when that date comes, you just need to do it again. We were, we were voting on whether we wanted to appeal as the Zoning Board of Appeals. I thought this was a public hearing. I'm sorry. The public has not been heard. Would you like to speak, sir? Too late now. Thank you. I would like to speak. I would like to speak. You have to go to the microphone. You have to go up to the microphone, state your name. I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> my, name is, <clears throat> my name is John Urowich. I'm a 50-year resident of Arlington, 33 at the corner of Martin Little John Street. This has been a very emotional and personal thing for me since its inception many years ago and the three or four other applications the owner has made. We've come down to something now where it's a state versus the town, and it's the developer versus the residents. We have, the town has come up with a number that satisfies the state's need for safe harbor. The, the applicant has said this is a wrong number, pose it to the state, the state says okay, you, we'll give you your appeal. Now it come back, comes back to us, the town, to reappeal against their appeal. In the big picture, and I'm not going to talk about Lake Street or the, woodland, the woodland, wetlands and the, you know, all of the stuff that we know we've battled around for months. What we have here is the town has spent a good bit of time and money to create a master plan. The word they use in there frequently is cherish. The town has a lot of cherished green, not a lot of cherished green space. This Muga property is one of those. The applicant would think that it's fine to go in there on day one with chainsaws and bulldozers and dump trucks, wipe out all the greenery, make it look like the Arden Forest in World War I, and then go in there and take six or seven centuries old water courses and slide them around like bowls of water on the kitchen table. It doesn't work like that. Those ponds have been there for centuries. They have their own structure below grade. You don't just slide them around like the proverbial bowl. The town has taken time and effort to make this a point to suit the, the neighbors and the neighborhood, the streets, the traffic, the woodlands, the wetlands, the greenery, the green space, the habitats, you name it. To have an applicant come in for the big payday, for the developer to have the big payday, for 219 or 231, I still haven't got a concrete number yet, new residents of Arlington to live in a new apartment or condo at the expense of umpteen neighbors in the Ladyville area, Kellen Manor, at either end of Lake Street, is just dead wrong. It's bad business, and we cannot let the state bully us around, never. The town has its own rules, 
The town has its own ways of doing things. We've supported ourselves all this long. We have to say no. We need the selectmen, the ZBA, the Conservation Commission, town meeting members, and all the residents of Arlington to stand with us and deny this applicant on so many means, so many means. Please say no to the MUGA development from here on out. Stand with us. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Jeff Lindholm. I live on Dorothy Road, right in front of the development. Uh, I have a question, and then I have a suggestion. Could you my please question speak is, a little louder, please? I have a question, and I have a suggestion. Uh, my question is, if we send that, we, if, if we uh, file this uh, motion to, you know, to protest their decision, is that the last bastion of hope? What, what, what happens after that? Is that basically we're defeated and we're done? Or are there, are there more steps after that? <clears throat> so the way that this process works, this is actually an interlocutory appeal, um, which means it's going outside the course of the normal review process. It's being done before this board finishes its decision-making process on the matter. It goes up to the Housing Appeals Committee, as, as that'll be the next step, once the HAC issues its decision, if it's a decision that this board doesn't like or if it's a decision the applicant doesn't like, it doesn't matter. The, everything goes back to the board for further proceedings. There's no further appeal. Everything, all appeal rights are essentially held in abeyance until the hearing process is completed. And then if the applicant doesn't like the decision of the board, they can take an appeal to the Housing Appeals Committee. You'll have to re-raise these issues at the Housing Appeals Committee in order to preserve them and then from there, an, an appeal to the trial courts, and then the appeals courts after that. So there could be a fair bit more to the process. OK. And that's totally separate from reviewing the issues with wetlands and flooding. And, I mean, right. This is, this is, this is a separate this, this, track. This is whether or not they can get away with just doing it anyway, regardless of those considerations. Uh, right? No. No? No. This, if you, if you want to the, speak, this the, is more whether, whether we need to even consider this under the regulations of 40B. If, we, if the town right. has enough housing stock allocated um, to um, affordable housing, then, then the application can't, doesn't need to proceed under, under the process that they have right. originally. So, so the way the regulations work, at the beginning of the hearing, within 15 days of the opening of the hearing, the board needs to notify the applicant whether it meets one of either the statutory or regulatory safe harbors. In this case, the town has asserted the uh, housing production, I'm sorry, uh, the 1.5% uh, statutory safe harbor. Mm -hmm. The town needs to actually assert that right with, within that time period or it loses it. So the town asserted that right. That then kicked off an appeal process to the Department of Housing and Community Development. The applicant took advantage of that appeals process, filed that appeal, DHCD is now ruled. The next step in the process is the interlocutory appeal to the Housing Appeals Committee. Once that is completed, everything goes back to the board to complete its normal hearing process, which has stayed until the interlocutory process is completed. Okay. And all of the claims will then be uh, allowed to be uh, addressed during the appeal, first to the Housing Appeals Committee, then to the trial courts, then to the appeals courts. So really, this is sort of just a, a taking a piece of the process out of order, addressing it up front, because if, the, if DHED came back and said, yes, the town, you meet your safe harbor, and the town didn't want to approve the project, you come back at the next hearing and deny it, and that would be the end of the process. Right. So they try to get that up, out of the way early to save resources you know, from going through a full hearing process and then getting to, DH, to HAC, only to find out you know, that they never had the right to, to go forward to begin with. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on perspective, it's now taking you know, a, a year plus to get through that process. That wasn't the original intent. Okay. So it was looking to me, or, or at least to the, to the limit of my knowledge, that you know, this, is, this, this has been tried before as well, although it looked like in this particular case, the McGar family and their contractor seem quite determined to go through with this, and they're, they're in for the long haul. So 
my, my question sort of leads to a suggestion of <coughs> should there be a plan B? You know, say if, if, it, if it doesn't go favorably for us by those reviews and appeals, and they're going to go for, you know, they end up going forward with it anyway, but that's going to cost them time to, to, to go through all of that. Um, I was. At, at that point, they come back to this board okay. to go through the typical hearing process. Okay. And that's when this board will you know, take advantage of whatever rights it has, and, and it will retain peer review consultants. You know, in order to review anything that's been submitted by the applicant, it will take a close look at all of its options and, and proceed accordingly. Mm -hmm. you know, the same as it would if the safe harbor process had never been initiated. Okay. That town council wants to speak up for a moment. Uh, folks, uh, I just want to uh, I, I want to say that I appreciate that there are so many folks here um, who want to be heard, and that this board. Uh, also wants to make sure that people are as informed as they can be. I do want to remind folks, this is actually not what's technically called a public hearing. It's, it's a limited issue of whether or not the board was going to appeal tonight. So they're, if, they can't respond to more substantive discussions about the MUGAR's proposal. They, they, they notice this meeting for the limited and very specific and narrow scope of are they going to appeal this? So I think the chair and the ZBA are, 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 want to hear from folks and they want to make sure that they recognize that so many people feel very passionately about this and want to be heard. But I just want to remind folks that if there's a lack of sort of dialogue about it, it's, it's, it's because we're here only to uh, look at the narrow issue of asserting and preserving this specific right which affects the posture of the rest of the examination of any application. Technically speaking, for example, uh, we could have safe harbor status, and that would not preclude, in this case or any other, hearing a 40B uh, application out and deciding on its merits, do we think this is a good fit? What it does, and again, Mr. Haverty is our technical assistant expert, but I think a way of characterizing it is it keeps the sort of control here in Arlington, whereas if we don't have safe harbor status, um, it makes it more, it means that the Housing Appeals Committee could be the ultimate uh, arbiter of what project gets approved and what doesn't. Is right. that a fair uh, assertion, Mr. Haverty? Yes. So, so what Safe Harbor does, if it is successfully asserted, is inoculate any decision by the board as automatically consistent with local needs. So whether or not you approve it without conditions, which never happens, if you approve it with conditions that the developer doesn't care, you know, doesn't feel rendered the project uneconomic, it's not going to be a problem anyways. If you approve it with conditions, that the developer feels renders it uneconomic, or whether you deny the project, in any of those circumstances, it's automatically going to be upheld if there's an appeal. OK, what you just said is sort of what I was alluding to with my suggestion, is if it looks like things aren't going favorably with you know, canceling the project, preventing it from happening entirely, if there's that path of negotiation where you say, well, all right, you can build it, but not as many units, or you're going to build us this over here to help with the traffic, you know, some kind of a right. So, so without discussing any substantive not, issues not regarding this details, project, just in general. It, as, as yeah. a way of process, most of these hearing processes go forward without the benefit of a safe harbor. Um, and whatever methods and means are available to a board to use to shape the project into something that's acceptable, or to deny a project if it can't be shaped into something acceptable are available to this board the same way they would be available to any other board. Okay. The, the safe harbor process is just a separate process um, and what will happen, what will happen with regard to that. Okay, thank you. What we had tonight was a procedural <coughs> hearing because we had a very tight timeline. We had to vote on whether to appeal or not to appeal. So that's why we had to have our meeting within a certain amount of time. We took our vote, we took a vote to appeal it and now we, we fall within that tight timeline that we had to respond. I'm Nancy Gray, I live on Mill Street. Um, it would be awfully useful if in the advocate or in your publication, Madam, um, there could just be a decision tree type or a genealogy type where this and this and this and this happen. We might all save it for all of these sort of things. Um, if somebody could just sit down with you as a reporter, and just do that. That would be awfully helpful. 
Thank you, Chris Bloody. Uh, Adams, you may have changed my mind and, and speak. I have one question for the board. About a year ago, there was another 40B application before you, and I had specifically requested that you invoke the safe harbor provision, and I'm wondering if that was actually done. Yes, it was. was it, and did the applicant appeal that at that time? They said they would during the hearing. I'm not sure they actually did. They did not. They did not. So it's never come before the HAC before, is that correct? Sorry. That's right. Okay. I, would, I would respectfully submit that you do not have a chance of prevailing. And I would ask whether any members of the board themselves have actually looked at the regulation and looked at the town's calculation. Mr. Chairman, I would recommend not discussing any of the substantive issues regarding the board's position on this matter. Um, this is open hearing, and anything you say can be used against you moving forward at the Housing Appeals Committee. Um, the, only, the point I would make is if you don't assert your safe harbor protection, you lose it. So if you don't take this appeal, then if at some point in the future it becomes clear that any claims you're, you're making are actually valid, um, you know, whether it's because uh, some other decision comes down from another court, um, you will not then be able to go back and say, well, we did have the safe harbor. Once you've lost it, it's gone. Thanks. I appreciate the, those comments. I would simply suggest that if you look at, if, if indeed what was reported in the press was correct about the town double counting bodies of water, you're not even close. And there is no way the HAC or a court is going to agree with the town's methodology. So in effect what you're doing is you're, you're costing the taxpayers money by, um, by spending it on outside counsel. You're delaying the whole process. And I would submit that in the end, you're going to come out with less. You're, you're negating your negotiating position with the applicant by delaying the project and taking this sort of approach because you really have no chance of prevailing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pearl Vacani. I live at 2 Mott Street, and I'm a member of the Coalition to Save and Move Our Wetlands. And on behalf of the Coalition, we thank you for voting the way that you did tonight, and we appreciate the timeliness of you putting this meeting together and, um, and our attendance to it. So thank you for that, and we will see what comes next. Thanks. You're welcome. Last one, last one. It's just a question, yeah. I live on Brooks Ave, and my question is, I think the residents of Belmont will be affected if this construction goes up. So are you working with the town of Belmont on this issue? Uh, you might want to look to Doug on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's premature at this juncture, because the one, well, again, what we're here to talk about is this Safe harbor status will affect the posture of how the town proceeds and how the applicants proceed. So uh, we haven't uh, gotten into the real substance. And if folks will recall from the September 27th initial opening hearing, one of the things that um, this board requested that the applicants do and continue to follow up on is provide further details so that we can know more about the project. Um, there's a lot of information that the board felt like it just didn't have in order to begin processing it. Uh, but the applicants, um, you know, but again, tonight we're not here to discuss that. I presume that issue will come up. And if, if in fact, Belmont um, is going to be impacted by this, I'm sure that the town and the ZBA will factor that in. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.